I will say this will go ooh <laughs> to map three. This will go ooh map three. That is the weakest prediction I've ever heard in my entire life. Anyway, Ghostu Crew, Enigma Six about to get underway. Ah, this is going to be great. Escalation, of course, the uh, the new. New game to it. I say yeah, new. It's yeah, been, it's been, know, it's been, I, I, it's been out a while. It's been out a while. But of course, for some of the newer viewers out here watching Escalation for what could be the first time, to win a game of Escalation, all you have to do is win by seven rounds. To win a round, you have to cap all three hills on the map and accumulate points. First 210 points of capping all three hills at the same time. Now, of course, there is the twist. The losing team each round gets to place a weapon on the map in the designated weapon slot. And they also have the option to block a yes, slot they as do. well. And of course, there's their respawn delay as well. Starts off at 10 seconds, it goes up 2 seconds every single round. Now, it does that until round number 7, which <laughs> indicates the halftime of the <laughs> game, and that's when the heels will flip. I was going to say, we're talking about a respawn time. It's like 10 seconds in, he's is already up in, in Ghost's Cruise base. Look at that! They ain't wasting no time! You know Alright, E6, we, I see you. We rarely I see, see you. it happen. Where in a process in which it takes for us to explain what escalation is, a round Esc is one. Escalation is is hard. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. We gotta hit all those notes, man. But look at that, dude. That was so quick. E6. They are not wasting a beat. They were just straight up close and personal in Gosu Crew. Now for Gosu Crew, though, they will have that weapon placement. Of course, the team that loses each round does have the uh, the privilege of putting a weapon down on the map to try and get back into it. Mm -hmm. But E6 came out swinging right there. Round number one, not playing around here. Uh, they know that this is going to be definitely a key and important matchup here. Now, one thing is that Eternity is the only player uh, so far in Gears Esports here on land to drop 50 kills That's in true. a match. I think now, it was back, back in Columbus, correct? Yeah. Now, the question is, can he do it here once again? This would be a beautiful time <laughs> to drop 50, a 50 bomb. Oh, this is, this is the time to do it when you're playing on a big rivalry matchup. No, a lot at stake. This is exactly the time that you are going to want to do it. Also to note, Wildeby started off very, very well in round number one. Picked up three kills. We're going to start off on board with Colin, though, for the Ghost of Creep. But the kill feed is all red once <laughs> again. Enigma again. 6 continuing where they left off. Already trying two picks early on in the round. Yogurt's going to go down as well. That's Hudson's with that pick. Meanwhile, Eternity is going to be able to find Claudia. He's going to hunt him down. And E6 again. Getting up close and personal into Ghost of Crew's base. They are here to make a statement. They made sure that they just decapped and got out of there. Make sure they hit the points, and you had a bollocks from Gosu, who actually went around here for the uh, for the sneak cap on E6's e home heel. So that pretty much kind of stopped E6's whole push, and he was able to flank them as well. So you see how uh, neglecting the other half of the map here in the beginning of the down can be detrimental, because it was a beautiful play start on the game, but they just could not get uh, tabs on the bottom. And Nick Six still with a 2-1 to one hill advantage. Oh, A&B yeah. currently under their control. They're also building themselves a little bit of a lead. You can see the scoreboard at the top left of your screen. 70 points now to 56 of the Gosu crew, and E6 are going to continue to grow that lead with that 2-1 to one hill advantage. Still looking at Hudson's perspective. This is just trying to slowly but surely put down some damage. Slow down that Gosu crew pushing towards the B hill, and here is that push from the Gosu crew over to Colin's perspective now. And again, looks to just try and find those kills, but right now, E6 doing just such a good job of defending this hill. As I say that, though, that could be the option. And finally, the chance Gosu crew need. Uh, right there, you know, E6 almost coming out of here with his domination, but Will is going to have to come up with a big double right here, but he goes down. But the key factor of how Ghostly Crew came out on top and winning that fight here on top of Green Hill was patience. They knew in due time E6 was going to put themselves in a vulnerable, vulnerable position, so they played the defensive role the entire time throughout that fight. And as soon as E6 recognized the pressure on the B hill, they sprung into life over towards that C hill. They put the pressure on Ghost of Crew's home hill, forced Ghost of Crew to essentially leave the B hill once they kept it. And that's exactly now why you're seeing these gunfights won. That's going to be phenomenal. And Hudson's both picking up wins. And finally, Nox just tries to fight back a little bit, but it just looks like it's just going to be a little too late. To be honest, that B hill's still completely neutral, but the Nicholas 6, they still do have numbers over there. Nox just still alive. He finally goes down. It's going to be phenomenal. It does finally pick up that kill. Will the beast there as well? B hill being capped, and immediately you can see E6 is in. Tension, they start just sprinting towards that sea hill. Yes, they do. And uh, E6, they did a great job here, making sure they won their fights right there. Their newest member, Phenomena, picked up some key kills over here in the area. Now we get a chance to see the push of which Ghost Crew can use to break this B set up here. Uh, I think that the, one of the main things that they need to do is make sure they have somebody flank around the back half of the map of the home hills, and we will see that actually. It's going to be three members of Ghost Crew saying, hey, you know what? We're going to go for these home hills while you guys just sit.
sit over here on top of Neutral Hill by yourself. Problem is, though, you're going to send that many resources to a home hill when you need to cap the B hill as well. Y you have to be a little bit more efficient with your resources where they're currently alive on the map there. They sent too many resources. I think you could argue they didn't go towards yeah, they, that I B think hill. at least one too many players right there. They didn't have enough... Uh, you know, uh, enough manpower right there to take control over that B hill with just the two members that were there, though. But they definitely had the uh, the right, you know, they had the right state of mind there. You know, that was definitely the, the, the play. They just need to be quicker with it. Now, of course, Ghost Crew back on to weapon placement. Looks as if they're hovering something towards the top side of the map or towards that pumping station. But for and a number six, 2 0 up, you've got to be feeling comfortable and you can just see the. <laughs> right now, they're looking like they want to block that position. Uh, which would be a good block. Uh, I think it is, you know, they haven't really fully had control over that. And if I'm E6 and I lose a round, that's going to be the first place I place down a weapon. And that's so true. Saying, hey, we're winning this. Uh, we're kicking these guys, but, you know, give us an in-bar drop shot. Let's reward us for our efforts here and constantly winning this fight here. But E6 plans the pitch They're going to block out that weapon spawn on the top half of the map. Wildebeest, eight kills currently. Looking very good indeed there. Look at our overhead as well. You can see pretty much a match as you would expect here on Damon. Speaking of Wildebeest, we'll look at his perspective exactly what has been going right for him so far. And he already finds the bollocks nicely done. Um, with that, honestly, that's opened up an entire lane towards the A hill. Let's go through Cruz home hill. And Wildebeest isn't going to waste any time about it. He's going to push forward. He's going to be able to find the second Ooh. kill. Ooh. It's going to be close. Ooh. Wildebeest gets it. He's on the hill. That was Fatal Strike as well. That gunfight maybe uh, lasting a little longer than it arguably should. Doesn't matter though. E6, they're looking to lock down the trip cap once again. That's all five players down. That is going to be another trip cap for E6. And that is going to be a 3-0 advantage. I'm just going to say it. Where is the Gosu crew right now? E6 is steamrolling through him. The main stage brings a lot of pressure, Benson. And sometimes that pressure holds a lot of weight. And then sometimes people ain't been doing their squats. So... You know, and you sometimes can see we just kind of crumble up under it. E6 just kind of standing up, looking across the table, saying, <laughs> we thought this was going to be a series. Come on, boys, shoot back. Uh, definitely still plenty of time here to turn this around uh, for Ghost of Crew. It's only, it's only round three. Uh, you know, you kind of you start to kind of panic for a team when, they, when an opposing team gets the opening four rounds. So I'll say four rounds. Four, four that's five, when you hit the panic five. button. Yeah, you start to hit the panic <laughs> button early on. But the thing is about escalation is, hey, these next few rounds are 18, well, my fault. Uh, 16, 18, yeah, and yeah, 20. Yeah, 16, 18, and 20 second response. Mm -hmm. And on a map like them, once you get those opening kills, all you got to do is kind of win your initials. You can get these, tri these uh, trip caps early right. on. It's very, very easy to do so. But again, for Ghost of Crew, they have to find a way of shutting down Wildebeest. This guy is just running this map right now. He's just taking a kill after kill, kill, and he, he's just roaming around, rotating, playing it absolutely perfect. 11 kills here for Wildebeest. And he's been doing, his, doing the thing right here. And uh, he's going to be putting the pressure on. And he sees Fatal Strike. And he's actually going to go wide. And him, by him going wide, that just that simple movement forced Fatal Strike out of the trunk. Yep. Because he knew it. Man, if I stay here, I'm going to die anyway. Little things like that make for uh, great players. Uh, and for lack of a better word, Wildebeest is just bullying the Gosu crew. He's able to just continuously put pressure on their home hill. B-Hill's being capped again. Is this going to be yet another trip cap for E6? The kill comes through just at the last second. It is. And that is 4-0 Enigma 6. Yes, it is here. And E6 are out here. They're, uh, they're backing up their talk, man. They're out here trying to get a victory for eternity and come out of here <laughs> and, and get a victory in their pool as well. Uh, we didn't get much trash talk in our interview, but let me tell you, they're definitely going at each other in the game. We got Affinity, one of the vocal leaders of the squad right here, one of their strategists. And, uh, you know, as you saw right there, you know, he's making sure he, get, he gets involved here. Uh, you know, this is going to be the one, one event where he puts his all out and we see the best Affinity Absolutely. out there. And you can see Ghost Crew hovering that sniper down towards Pit. Oh, at what point do you think maybe did they consider, hey, let's just put a boom shot down platform, something we've seen throughout the year? Should have considered it last round. Last um, round? Yeah, last round, a round ago. Uh, definitely probably would have been an acceptable weapon placement because if you're losing so many fights over there at B, by you round, have to take the by fight round away from four, it. it's like, all right, let's flip the map. Yeah. Let's throw something on plat yeah. that holds enough weight to tilt, uh, tilt the scales and draw the fight down low. For Ghost Crew, though, fight up top of B, still going to be the, the key one to watch the rifle down low. Looks like it's going to be a 2v1 potentially in Ghost of Crew's favor. It is going to be Wildebeest who's playing this side of the map. Honestly, it's a, a great drop because I think he's, he's playing well enough where he could actually win that if he wanted to. A bollocks will grab the sniper rifle. Wildebeest just wisely uses that smoke to his advantage. Doesn't want to take any of that just yet. And speaking of a bollocks, and, and, and that, was, that was the play. They knew E6 was going to go towards his neutral hill, and they know how, how talented a bollocks is with snipe. 
But now he needs to come big for the team. Oh, yeah, he, they need him the most here. The majority of their members almost got caught right there. This is where you kind of get out of here and, and you know stay alive to play another day here. And uh, you really have to start connecting some of these snipe shots when your team can do the most. Yeah, Bullock's missed but he got you. flanked. And, yep, he uh, will go down. Now you can see on your screens it's going to be eternity. He has Colin in front of him. He's going to find that. Now looking for the second. Is he going to find it? It's close. He's full already. He does go down, but Abolix has been down as well. Look for someone to clean that up. It's going to be affinity. Just cruises on and finds that e instant pick. Noxious that was there for a trade of his own. So the B Hill still going to be neutral. Goes through finally finding their feet. It looks like here in round number five. Bear in mind, 18 second respawn this round as well. So you die, you are out for a significant amount of time. But at the score, as it stands, 56 to 39 and growing. The B Hill still completely neutral, but finally goes through crew starting to string together some kills. Yes, they are here, Vincent. And uh, now you see them, they actually have a good lead here. But <laughs> the crazy part is, is that you have Sniper that's about to be on respawn now. And you have one of the most talented snipers in the game on the E6 team, and that's in Hudson. So if he is able to get this uh, scope on the top half of the map, oh, it's going to be uh, real deadly for these guys here. It's going to put them in a good position. And he's he it, and he wants it. They already called him out. They said, Hudson's come on over here and get it. All right, Hudson. You said he's the, one of the most lethal snipers in the game. Let's see uh, what he's got for us this evening. Definitely is, and we don't get a chance to see him with it too often, because uh, uh, you know just the way. Ha no. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh Hudson! With the body on that one, Knox is gonna have to run. Knox is able to pick up at least one kill there, but as we see right there, shots like that. I feel, all right. I feel another one. Uh, all right, all right, all right. He's, he's justifying it. He's justifying it. Hit some body shots and as I, well. I, I tell you one thing: if he don't connect with the, the headshot, he's definitely gonna connect with that body. Absolutely. Hudson now though rotates the snap for over towards the B Hill. He does have Fatal Strike directly in front of him. Meanwhile, Yogi's actually shut down Phenomenon here. So E6 could be in some trouble over towards the B Hill. And you see Hudson's wisely just back away from that fight. Try and spread the Gosu Cruise resources over there. And just because of that, you see those trades not coming through. Would I believe, was able to pick up a kill. The B Hill still pretty neutral as it stands. But look at the score for Gosu Crew. 154 to 97. They have a big, big lead. E6, they're going to start having to think about trip caps as it stands. They're in that kind of territory now when you look at those points. Yes, they are here. And you look at the score. It's in favor of Ghost of Crew. They got a good 50 point lead right here. Uh, one thing is, they need to make sure they can keep control of their home hill and uh, spawn it up right here. Their home hill is not even decapped. capped. This is E6's home hill is uh, capped up right here. I, I, I think back. E e e E6 are just going to play for, hey, whoever's off spawn, grab that home hill. We've we got to take control of Ghost of Crew's hill, and you know, that's the play that they have to make. Unfortunately, though, the kill's going in favor of Ghost of Crew. That's going to oh, be that's three. That's, that's going to be four. That be a Ghost of Crew finally get their that's footing. Phenomena. In this map, nope. no, no. Not gonna be a big right there, and Gosu goes on the it's on the board right here. And this was uh, this was definitely a round that they needed. Yes, it was. Gosu crew, they're they're immediately standing up. They're, they're letting them know as well. They're getting pretty loud yep. on that side of the the booth. That's gonna be Fatal Strike set up, and I believe uh, looking at Affinity, Affinity just giving him a thumbs up. He's like, sit down, man. You're four one. Like you already know, <laughs> check. At you, that you point, at that point, you tell the, tell the opposing team score check. <laughs> take, like, a look, take a look at that scoreboard. Score check. Score, scoreboard. What? All right. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? As it stands, though, E six four one up. Ghost of Crew. This is a big round for them. If they're able to win this and go into the half four two down, it obviously it's a, a lot prettier than five one. That's for sure. As weapon placement now done. Twenty second respawn delay here in our sixth round of gameplay. Of course. We're in the second half sh shortly after this, but World of Beast, 15 kills. We, we highlighted him before this for exactly this reason. He is just a man of many, many talents. Yes, he is here. You have the, uh, the, the former duo of SYN trying to synergize over there uh, with 18 kills and bring Gosu back into this. So they're going to come down to a big fight over here for the sniper. And World of Beast is going to be over here defending. He's got a Bollocks and Noxious. They're going to be counting the corner. They're not able to angle out Water Beast. And Water Beast is calling for help. Then the nades come in. And I think that one's actually going to connect with his oh, teammate. Oh, it's a team kill. But Hudson's. he was able to get another one as well. They're going to push out these opposing members. They got one down. Abolix is going to get the revive. Noxious goes down. That's going to be an E6 fight right there. Yeah, that's going to be another kill as well in their favor. So that's going to be Fatal Strike. Last man up. Fatal, you have to make the play now because E6, they're going to be pushing for that trip cap very, very soon. Fatal Strike finds himself in the middle of nowhere. He's going to be taken out as well. I think that was a Snipe shot uh, across the map potentially that came through from Hudson. He gets the downing again, hitting shots. Maybe I'll give a little rub there to be honest, but Hudson still putting pressure over towards that C Hill player now coming off spawn. Hudson still doing a good job, just being a nuisance. The Thorn and Gosu Crew side right now. He goes down, but should have a revive there from a teammate very, very soon. That's going to be phenomenal. Who just rolls in and saves Hudson's life. Yes, he is. 
And uh, but now he his team is good. They got a good double cap going on right here. They're collecting points. They're just gonna take the lead here. Uh, new sniper won't be up for another 40 seconds or so. And E6, my fault. Ghostly crew can actually they can chill here and they can wait on the top side of the map and wait for this advantage if they want to. And I think E6 may set up and it may be like, all right, you know what? This is what you guys want to do. Let's and, do it. And you can see Ghost Recruit going for that exact play. They're trying to flank now towards E6's base over towards that home hill. And I feel like as soon as E6 realize that, they're going to do just this. They're going to spring into life and just flip the map, essentially. Head over towards Ghost Recruit's home base. That's what you can do. You can force those gunfights on that side of the map. And as soon as you have that numerical advantage, you have the extra resources. That's when you can apply the pressure elsewhere on the map. And you can close out this round. Hudson still, though, with a sniper rifle just waiting ever so patiently. Patient player, and he has it in his hands. Finally, though, you're going to see the kills come through. Willoughby's finds one. Affinity finds a second. That's going to be a bollocks down as well. Phenomenon still just tantalizingly dancing around the sea hill. Now with Noxious in front of him. This is a 1v2 essentially for him, but he's still going to take it. Oh. Is he going to be able to win it? Oh. But no, he does get the pick on Yogurt, and that is huge in a 20 second respawn round. Does just enough to buy his teammates some time. However, Ghost Crew, though, still desperately trying to fight for those home hills. The score 155 to 139. E6 should be able to now lock in control of that A hill C. Only hill not capped. And he had eternity. He was a sole member of E6 to fit in that B hill. And Knox is trying to get in here and take him out. But you know, you got Hudson's in eternity. They're locking down his B hill. And they know that, hey, at this point, he can kind of just hold one hill here and be good. Ghost of Crew has to play for this B hill. And Affinity gets a fantastic kill with those grenades right there. And giving his team the man advantage on these 20 second respawns. Yep. Now, Will the Beast, he knows, hey, I can just sit back, hold my home hill. That's all I need to do. And have that numerical advantage as well. You can see Orby 4 now, and for Gosu Crew, <laughs> you're, you're a little late there on that push. That needed to come in about 10 seconds sooner. So E6 going in the half, 5 1 up. Well, I, see, I expected this one to be a little closer. You want to ask me my predictions now? Yep. 2 0 E6. <laughs> Thanks. I gave him, right? <laughs> that's, that's how you predict. <laughs> that's how you predict. You do you. You, know, you, so. you do you. I think this, the scary thing as well for Ghost Crew is, is statistically speaking, this is one of E6's you know, slower maps, if you will, 40% in terms of the series. You, you're heading up against Harbor and Reclaimed Harbor, their second best map all year. That's going to be so difficult to take off E6. They're very, very taunted when it comes to that map. It really is going to be very, very difficult, especially when they're playing right now with a chip on their shoulder. Uh, they've been in group play with Optic plenty of times. They don't know how difficult that group can be. So, uh, the fact is that they lost 14 0 to Optic in those two maps. It ain't the first time, okay? Colin springing into life here at the start of our second half. Wildebeest, though, just responds. Hudson's going to be there as well. The kills go back in E6's oh, favor yeah. if they desperately try and get control of that E hill. Ghost of Crew, though, look good. Yep, it's going to be Fatal Strike on it. He has the support of a Bollocks as well, so that neutral hill will go in their favor. However, there is still someone there. I believe it was Hudson who did just go down. Well, Gosu Crew starting off the second half with the advantage. And so now, Gosu Crew is doing a good job here at holding this platform here and keeping the members of E6 at bay here. But now E6 is going to look for an alternate plan here, and that's going to be to attack Gosu Crew's home hill because they see how the numbers here. It's about five members of Ghost Crew actually in that area. Uh, nobody's got a home hill, so that can, that can get decapped fairly easy here. And now uh, that's a D hill, but the Ghost Crew have back up to the fifth air hill. As they have a quick glance at our overhead map. Ghost Crew now with a number 20 point lead. Of course, that scoreboard at the top left of your screen. You can see the E hill now being neutralized as well. That's going to be a name six, causing some problems. Affinity and the teammate there seem to be able to cap that hill. That's going to start slowly chipping away at the early Ghost Crew lead. Meanwhile, Noxious from the Ghost Crew. He's got one looking for the second. Not going to be able to get it just yet. Very, very weak. So just slowly backs away. Waits for his health to regen. Now he's going to have another go at it. Will get it down. Also going to clean that kill up. Noxious being a, a massive nuisance right here for an in six. Yes, he is. You know, he, he was the sole member right there to really get them back in control over this platform. And so far, it seems like Gosu Crew is having a little bit more success here uh, controlling Neutral Hill on this half of the map. And, and what's interesting is, <laughs> why not force that fight in the first half? Right, if you'd have played for something and, you know, put a big power weapon down on that platform side, you negate that top side of the map, you have to play for it. As you said, they're having success on the side of the map. They just seem to, they're much more comfortable. They seem better set up as well. Very, very strange decision from them in the first half of the map. Definitely was. And, you know, maybe based off previous maps, they just didn't have the confidence in it or uh, nobody was able to make the heads up play in this pressure situation. Uh, now E6 responds with three kills here. And uh, they're looking to take control of this E-Hill and 
those two souls up. And that's going to be Hudson's, and he's going to shut down Fatal Strike as well. So the E Hill goes in E6 favor. The D Hill as well is being decapped. That was a good rotation by Noxious. Noxious caps his home hill. Now this is where you have to do the math. 174 to 160. Can they win just off one hill? That is going to be the question for E6. They know they have to put the pressure on it. A trip cap domination could potentially come through. The F Hill is being capped for the Bollocks. He gets a big win on Phenomenon. Now he has two other players just chasing him. He's looking to basically 1v3 on his home hill. It's not going to happen. Eternally cleans him up, and that is going to be a trip cap for E6. You blink and you miss it. They were trailing in terms of points for the majority of that round, but when push came to shove, they clutch up and get that trip cap. E6 has too much to prove right here, this event. And, uh, you know, they feel themselves getting better, and they feel like this is their event. Uh, regardless regardless of, of petty rivalries outside the game, they're here right now just to show up and just whoop up on anybody after they're playing. Yep, completely agree. So much to play for for the Enigma 6 squad. And I think they've kind of clicked at the perfect time. It's, you know, you, you're looking toward the, the end of the season and you've really started to find that form and you, you started to find that trust in your teammates. Such it, a, such a shame, Infinity's last event. It, it really is. I, w I, would, I would love to see, you know, just how far this team could go. They, they stuck it out towards the end of the circuit. But finally, we're going to see a drop shot placed by Gosu Crew right down at the bottom of the pit. Definitely loving that pit engagement, a little bit more than the platform, because you could put the drop shot on the platform, but they want to focus out here wide. Uh, definitely less areas that they have to kind of look at in order to get that drop shot. But it's going to come down to a big team fight right here. Colin backing up. He goes down. His teammate gets trapped right here. Bollock is trying to bounce out of there. But Yogurt to save the day. He's going to get another down. This is where you put the drop shot. He's going to actually go in there and get that kill. The kills. Is he going to be able to get it? He finds one. That's going to be Hudson's down. This another big one. Oh. He's going to fall. And that's going to be Affinity clutching up he should, for I, He should have picked up the drop shot and baited the kill. Uh, you know, and now... Affinity came up huge right there after the revive of Hudson's, and now the drop shot is going to be in favor of E6. And that's, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, deadly right here in their hands. Ghost of Kurali playing it. from behind. As long as they're efficient with it, too many times we've seen that uh, fire weapons not really yes. utilized. People well not being patient enough with yes. the drop shot. <laughs> that's really what it is. Well, we'll see if Affinity is going to make those mistakes. A veteran like himself, you don't really expect to see it. We'll wait and see. He's just covering that E hill. No one from Ghost Recruit can really push over that uh, and try and make that play. Meanwhile, from Ghost Recruit, you can see the to the other side of the map. You can see Fatal Strike just trying to put down some damage. And as of now, though, everyone just kind of backing away. It, it is advantage Enigma Fix in terms of hills, but they still do have a Ghost Recruit lead that they can chip away at. Maybe just less than 10 points, and there's Affinity. Fires a drop shot, connects with the pick on Yogurt. Affinity has gone down, though. Phenomenon able to pick up Fatal Strike as well. The kill feed once again, all red. It's all in favor of V6. In goes a bollocks, though. He finds one. Can he find the second? Not going to happen. Hudson's again shuts it down, not making any mistakes at all this map. Okay, you know, one of those features in the game uh, is the marking system. You know, you mark a player. Hit. You can actually see them on the map anywhere. And making sure you mark players and get that drop shot officially is very key to connecting those two. Not just, just desperately trying to keep Gosu Crew's dreams alive here in map number one. It's not looking good though, because once again, Enigma 6 are slaying them out. And that will be that. A 7 1 demolition of the Gosu Crew on main stage. 7 1 demolition indeed there, Benson. Uh, that was a quickie. Definitely a quickie right there for this Enigma 6 crew. And, uh, you know, going to the second map, that's going to be Harbor, uh, which is going to be Ghost of Crew's pick. So we're going to see if that's going to be the map to kind of tie this back into their favor. Well, as we mentioned, a 7-1 victory there. E6 going to be feeling very, very confident going into uh, map number two. Of course, map number two, we talked about it earlier on. It's going to be Harbor. This is one of E6's uh, stronger maps throughout the circuit. 60% win ratio throughout all games on LAN this season. So technically, they're, they're second highest. So, you know, they're, they're going to feel very good. And to, to me, I, I hate to write teams off, and I hate to be that, that guy. Yeah. But it, this is E6's But sometimes, story. based off what they show us in certain maps and, and uh, certain performances where you have to perform, yep. uh, you got to first, uh, you know, as a viewer, take into account uh, the weight of this match. Absolutely this is a do. pool play match. One is you have Optic Gaming in your bracket, all right, and which is a team that's expected to possibly come out here and win this event. You know, they've dominated everybody, you know, two O's in, in, in a bracket. So, you know, you're kind of fighting for that second spot in a bracket. In this match, you have to show up in order to come out here and possibly